Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. And we now turn to, the one more time, the brilliant Emily Dickinson. I'm with you on page 728. We never know how high we are. By the way, some of you have asked, um, why does she title her poems the first title of, uh, uh, the first line of every poem? No, no, no. Hope is the thing with feathers is not the title Emily Dickinson gave to the poem. She often didn't title her poetry. When the poems were published after her death, they were published as with titles of first lines. And so that's why all of her poems will have the same, will have the same first line. Hey, let's go to page 723 quickly. Let's look at Emily Dickinson, again, biography information. Put it in your notes, 1830 to 1886. Emily Dickinson's life in Amherst, Massachusetts seemed to be a quiet and uneventful, yet the emotional power of her poems shows the wide range of her energy and imagination. She found profound meanings in simple subjects, and her poems still delight readers. Um, we will meet, as we've said about a number of these poets we're reading now, we will meet Emily Dickinson again in thorough in the junior year. Now, of course, you don't have to wait to be a junior to study much of that with me. You can just simply go to learnstrong.net, find down the left-hand side the junior folder and go and find the stuff about Emily Dickinson. We're going to turn now to her classic, We Never Know How High We Are, and we're going to pay attention to two things. Let's write it down. One, Dickinson is able to create, seemingly, something out of nothing. I've had students that look at these short poems and they go, well, how, I mean, really? I mean, how much can she say in this small number of lines? And we'll be blown away by the fact that she says so much. I mean, go back to what we said about much madness is divine sense, the way in which she's able to say so much with so little. Number two, Dickinson teaches us how to pay attention to punctuation. Okay, both as readers as well as writers. Grammar matters, if you will, okay? And obviously we'll be paying attention as well to all kinds of literary devices as we're, as we're looking at them. Let's just read the poem to start with, all right? Again, page 728. We never know how high we are till we're asked to rise. And then, if we are true to plan, our statures touch the skies. The heroism we recite would be a normal thing did not ourselves the Cupid's work for fear to be a king. Your, your uh, footnote will tell you that Cupid's, the ancient measurement using the length of an arm from the end of the middle finger to the elbow, about 18 to 22 inches, will help you read this poem. Now, let's break this poem down in terms of, at level 2, A and 2B, what exactly is it that she's saying? Let's first of all start even at level one by asking, what's going on? Well, there it is in the opening line. We never know how high we are till we are asked to rise. So let's pause for a moment and put it in your own words at level one. In other words, we learn a lot about ourselves when we are challenged to learn a lot about ourselves. I'll say it again. We learn a lot about ourselves and who we are when we are finally challenged to learn a lot about ourselves and to rise to exceed expectations. The way we come to know who we are is in large measure by the challenges we take on. Yes? And so you can already see why, for example, a poem like this easily compares at 3A with a poem like uh, The Road Not Taken, right? And then, if we are true to plan, our statures touch the sky. In other words, when we go for something, we then can begin to grow as a person. The heroism, notice its capitalization, we recite would be a normal thing did not ourselves, the Cupid's work, for fear to be a king. Notice again the use of the dash at skies, the use of the dash at the end of the word king. It's as if she's doing what? It's almost like she's kind of giving you a bit of a thought. Let me give you a little bit of a thought. Two observations. One, we never know what greatness lies in us until we're challenged to find that greatness. Two, the reason we so regularly do not challenge ourselves and we walk away from challenges is F-E-A-R, the fear of being a king. So let's jump to 2A really quickly and let's work meet themes messages here. One obvious theme message is sometimes students, people, 
will in fact fear success. Not fear failure. Fearing of failure is of course a major problem, no question. But fear of success can be an equally amazing challenge. What are you talking about? How can anyone fear being successful? It's the fear of not being successful. No, no, think of it. Because once you are successful, there can be expectations. A freshman once said, I learned this early on in school. If I did well, there were expectations that I would continue to do well. So I learned in middle school, do really crummy, and nobody ever expects anything from you. Ouch. One or two freshmen say, you kind of know what that means. If I don't ever try, I won't go out for the activity. Because if I go out for the activity, I might be good at it, and then people will think that, I'm be, that, I, that I can really, really, really help. And so I'm not going to go out for the Fear of success is as dangerous as fear of failure. And, and Dickinson says, this is what being human is all about. Let's put another theme message there for ourselves at 2A. The greatness that lies within you can only be drawn out by being challenged. And the adults in your life who challenge you to be better, they're not challenging you to be bitter. They're challenging you to be better. They're demanding more of you. That is a great gift. If you live with a person who is always asking you, why do you have a B instead of an A? You might want to think about that as a gift and not a curse. You got somebody in your life that's saying, you can do better. You should do better because you can do better. Aspire to greatness. At level 2B, notice the rhythms here. We never know how high we are till we are asked to rise. Look at that. We never know how high we are till we are asked to rise. For the rap lovers in the house, you appreciate this kind of stuff because you appreciate the beauty of a natural rhythm. It's a beautiful rhythm, right? And it is one that, for example, starts to sound a lot like a song or something, right? It is quite lovely. At 3A, let's remind ourselves of a text or two that comes to mind about the importance of being challenged. What is the athletic text for you that says, it teaches you, you got to be challenged. you got to want more of yourself and demand more of yourself. And when people demand more of you, that is a blessing, not a curse. I'm going to go to the great text, Plato's Apology. In that text, Plato, writing about his great teacher Socrates, tells us, right before Socrates dies, he says it, that famous line, the unexamined life is not worth living. Whoa, what a line. I've had freshmen that write that one down and they put it in their locker and look at it or next to their bed every morning and get up to look at it. The unexamined life is not worth living. The life that is worth living is the life that demands something of us. It's the challenges of our life that are most important. Let's jump to 3B. Two-part question. Do you fear failure? Can you think of a time when fear of failure kept you from doing something? You thought, I should try this, but I'm worried that I'll fail and therefore I'm not going to try it at all. Second question. It's an inevitable question given this poem. Do you fear success? Can you write down a time in your life that you actually didn't attempt something simply because you knew you would be successful? If I do this well, the teacher's going to know I'm bright and then is going to expect more of me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Fear of success. It can paralyze us. I hope that you will lie both aside, both of those fears, fear of success, fear of failure, and move forward, as Emily Dickinson will suggest. Well, there you go. One more classic gem, and it is a gem, isn't it? Anytime we pick up an Emily Dickinson poem. Thank you.